When you were a kid, did you ever make magic mud? You know that mixture of cornstarch and water where you'd mix it up in a bowl and then if you punched it or pressed hard on it, then it would be like a solid and it would totally resist your pressure. But if you just let your hand rest on it gently, it would absorb right into it. It would just slowly ease right into the mixture and almost become a liquid. One of them, when we pushed, it resisted. The other one, when we eased in gently, it accepted. That's what we're gonna talk about today. We are gonna talk about the mental toughness and emotional intelligence building skill of acceptance versus resistance. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you're back again, it is always good to have you here. Thanks for joining me. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. The button's about right down there. And if you get something out of the video, if you could like it, that would be amazing. Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, where we are taking this work to the next level where you're being guided and supported, getting tools and strategies and step-by-steps the whole way through. You can get more information about The Shift Society in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And honesty time. When was the last time you said or thought something like, why does that person always do that kind of stuff? If they wouldn't act like this or do these things, I wouldn't get so upset. Why can't they be more like this? What is their problem? And why do they always say those kinds of things? When we are having conversations with ourselves like this and not doing anything about it, we are in resistance. We are trying to force a change that may not want to change or that may not be available to change or that may not even know that we want it to change. And so we are spending so much of our own time stressing and getting angry and bitter and annoyed and frustrated about who or how someone is instead of moving into more of a place of acceptance. Now, accepting that someone says certain things or acts in a certain way or always has these annoying habits doesn't mean that we have to just be okay with it. It doesn't mean we just have to go along with it. But when we are in this space of resisting and getting frustrated and angry and not doing anything to manage our own minds around it, or to have a conversation with them to work it out, we are keeping ourselves in unnecessary frustration and upset and turmoil and stress, and we don't have to do that. So if we wanna get out of resistance, right? That Think of that magic mud, pushing against, punching against, resisting it, and then it just stays solid. Nothing happens. But when we move more into acceptance, then we have some space for movement. It becomes a lot softer. So when we can take a step back and say, okay, this person does these things or says these things or has these habits that annoy me, instead of resisting it and getting myself all upset about it and thinking about it and ruminating about it and gossiping about their, their things that drive me crazy behind their back, that is me in resistance and instead I am gonna move more into acceptance and curiosity. So being able to take a step back and say, I don't know why, but for some reason, this person has these habits. This person says these kinds of things. This person always comments on my parenting or my weight or my dating status or my job choice, or this person is always trying to put their opinions onto other people, or this person is always so difficult and rigid and never flexible. Instead of getting ourselves so upset about that, taking a step back and saying, okay, this person has words or actions or choices that are theirs. 
So do you see that? I'm moving into acceptance. This person has a way of doing things in their own life. Now, fair enough that I might not like it, that it might get to me, that it might bother me, that I might want them to stop doing it, but what am I going to do about it if I don't like it? Because pissing and moaning about it is not getting me anywhere except for making me more frustrated and upset. So I have some options. And what can we do when someone is annoying us or hurting our feelings or we're finding them frustrating? First of all, we can ask them. We can ask them why they are doing something. We can ask them why they are saying those types of things. Why is it that you are commenting on my weight? Why is it that you are judging the way that I parent? Why is it that you seem to be kind of looking down on me when I am telling you about the work that I do or the job that I do? Why is it that you seem to kind of tune out when I'm telling you about things that are important to me? So getting curious and asking them why, instead of coming at them and accusing them, getting angry with them, freaking out, just get curious. This is what's happening. I accept that this is what's happening. I don't have to like it, but I accept it. So I am gonna move with it instead of continuing to push against it and get curious. Now, another thing that you can do is you can set a boundary saying, please don't do this. I don't like this. Talking about my parenting style is not an option. Commenting on the color of the drapes that I've chosen that I love is not something that I'm interested in. Being called names when we're having an argument is not what I am available for. And if you continue, I'm gonna remove myself from the conversation. So setting a boundary. This is what I want, this is what I don't want, and making that request for change. Now, what if someone just blatantly ignores it? What if you make these requests, you get curious about what's going on, you have a conversation with them and ask for the changes that you're looking for or ask them to stop doing things that they're doing or ask them to start doing things that you want them to do and they just blatantly refuse. They're not going to do it or they say they will and then they don't. So they probably forgot or they're not even aware that they're doing that thing and so it's not even in their conscious mind so they just keep doing it because they don't really know they're not aware of this thing. So an example for me was I would always leave the coffee pod in the Nespresso machine when I would make a coffee. Now, my husband at the time really didn't like it and it would really bother him because to him, Getting the coffee pot out of there would make it so that the pipes and things wouldn't get clogged up or that it would keep things more sanitary clean. I don't know. But it wasn't important to me to not get the pod out of there. I didn't see it as a problem. It wasn't in my consciousness. I wasn't aware of it. I'd be quick, making a coffee, getting it done, get the water pulled through, take my coffee and go. And not always remember to eject the pod because it wasn't important to me. Now, my husband at the time found this very annoying and very frustrating. And me not doing it wasn't a slight to him. It wasn't like, I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna to listen to what you say, or I'm not gonna respect your request. It was just that it wasn't in my immediate awareness because it wasn't important to me. And so I had to consciously remember to do that. And I would sometimes, and I wouldn't sometimes. But either way, it wasn't against him. It was just because it wasn't in my awareness, because it wasn't something that I thought of as important or a priority. So this can even count if you have a family member that comments on your relationship status, on your job choice, on your parenting style, on your appearance, and you really don't want them to, it might just be a habit for them and not doing it doesn't really even occur to them. That's just what they do. And so if you've asked for a change, if you've requested something different, if you've even had a conversation with them about it and there isn't any real consistent change happening, this is where we work on our acceptance. And really just seeing, okay, this is what's happening. This is what this person always does. I can continue to upset myself about it 
or I can work on managing my own mind around it. It's so interesting how we'll often say things like, oh my gosh, my mother always comments on my weight, or oh my gosh, my uncle always looks down on the way I parent, or oh my gosh, my sister is always commenting on my decor style and asking me why I chose certain patterns in like this condescending way, or oh my gosh, this person never texts me back immediately. What is that thing for you? I want to hear in the comment section below. What is that thing where like this person always does this? It's so annoying. It's so frustrating. It makes me so angry. Let me know in the comment section below. So here's the interesting thing. How often have you said that this person always does this? So if they always do it, why are you so surprised when they do it? Why are you so upset or shocked or pissed off or put off when they do that thing? Because it's what they always do. So if there's no sign that they are going to change that thing, knowing that you can't keep resisting it because you can't actually change someone else. You can make requests, you can have conversations, but at the end of the day, you can't take their arms and move them in the positions you want or flap their mouth to have the words that come out that you want them, that you want to come out. You move into that acceptance. They always do this. So why am I so shocked when they do? What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to prepare myself. I am going to prepare my mind. I am going to prepare my heart and I'm going to go into these situations, experiences or interactions with this person, knowing that they're probably going to do this thing. Not so that I can come away being all smug, like, huh, I knew it. I knew they were going to say that. I knew they were going to do that because then again, that just builds resentment and bitterness and that's not going to be helpful for us not a great strategy for building our mental toughness or our emotional resilience, but a great strategy for keeping ourselves angry, frustrated, and resentful. So I am instead going to just accept that this is what this person does. And I am going to manage my own mind and my own emotions around it. I am not going to upset myself by being worked up about someone doing something that they always do. This can be difficult when it's with a partner. It's a lot easier when it's with a family member we don't see all the time, a colleague that we only run into every once in a while, a neighbor that we might cross paths with, cross path, paths with from time to time, where it's a lot easier to kind of take these things and manage ourselves in these smaller doses. What if it's with your partner? What if it's with someone that you have to spend a lot of time with? What are you going to do about that? Two things that are going to be immensely helpful. First of all, if you have a partner that always leaves their socks on the floor or always forgets to put the plunger down in the shower. So when you go in and turn the water on, it comes spraying on your face immediately not speaking from experience, or leaves wet towels in piles to get mildewy, or forgets to do the thing that you asked them to do, even though you reminded them three times. What do you do about that? Know that this thing that's important to you may not be important to them, which is why they are not immediately remembering. So you can continue to remind them, you can continue to have conversations around it. But in the meantime, instead of focusing on what they're not doing and how they are disappointing you or irritating you, focus on what they are doing. So your partner leaves clothes on the floor, but they cook dinner most nights, or they take care of a lot of little things around the house, or they might forget to sign the kids up for soccer, but they often are good at making sure the kids get to their doctor's appointment on time. So what is that thing? Maybe even your mother, your mother-in-law, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, they say these kinds of things that are irritating, frustrating, upsetting, but they do these other things to show you that they love you, that they care about you and that they're there for you. So we can focus on what someone is doing instead of what they aren't doing and accept that this just might be part of their package. And then the other thing, as we talked about, managing your mind around it. 
instead of saying, mom, sister, partner, aunt, uncle, cousin always does this, saying, that's what this person does. These are the actions that come out of their bodies. These are the words that come out of their mouth. And I am going to decide what I do with that. I am going to decide what I make that mean, how much I take it in, how much I allow myself to get put off or offended by it. I'm going to manage me because I cannot control them. Focus not on what isn't changing and instead focus on what I can do. Moving into the acceptance of what is instead of the resistance of what is. And when we are in that acceptance, acceptance, then we can decide what we want to do about it and use our energy towards what we want to do instead of our energy towards how annoyed, frustrated, or angry we are. As the serenity prayer so beautifully puts it, God or higher power or whoever Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Get my 10-minute guided mindfulness exercise. This is going to be a great one to help you manage your mind and emotions, not get so worked up, creating some space between what someone is doing or how they are acting or what they are saying, and how you want to think about that and respond to that. That is completely free. It's a really great audio. The link is in the description below. Now let me know, which one are you going to start with? Are you going to start with looking for what someone is doing versus what they aren't? Or are you going to start with managing your mind around what they are or not are not doing because this is always what they do or don't do? Always good to have you here. Get that free 10 minute guided mindfulness exercise. Take good care of yourselves. Take good care of those around you. Bye for now.